output shaft overhaul disassembly. We will use a hydraulic press, a pair of V-blocks, a tapered bearing splitter, and snap ring removal tool to disassemble the output shaft. The output shaft bearing and fourth driven gear can be removed together. Use the V-blocks under fourth driven gear. Leave a little space so the V-blocks are not pressing up against the output shaft. Center the shaft and V-blocks under the press ram. Face shields or safety glasses are a must when using the hydraulic press. Operate the foot pedal to apply ram force. Double check the V-block position. While applying pressure, once the gear and bearings start to move, you will hear a creaking noise. Don't stop. Keep the ram moving. Make sure to hang on to the shaft from below so it doesn't fall on the floor once the gear and bearing are free from the shaft. Once the gear and bearing are free from the shaft, take a close look at both because they are directional. Note the location of the snap ring groove on the bearing and the difference from side to side on the gear. Remove the spacer and note that it is not directional. Third gear is pressed on, but the gap between second and third is too small for the bearing splitter. Instead, we will use the flat side of the bearing splitter up against the flat edge of second gear, being careful not to grab onto the dog teeth. Look closely at how I have the splitter attached as it makes contact on the flat side of second gear, but it does not grab or clamp onto the dog teeth. The splitter is also not up tight, so it rotates slightly. Place the bearing splitter on the V-blocks, making sure that the bolts are supported by the V-blocks. Never use the splitter on the V-blocks with the bolts unsupported like this. Lower the table just enough to make room to slide the output shaft under the center of the ram. Lower the ram with the foot pump while holding on to the shaft below. Check the direction of third gear and second gear because they too are directional. Note the difference from side to side from third gear, as well as the difference from side to side on second gear. The synchronizer sleeve got stuck on the V-blocks because I did not provide enough clearance. Remove the blocker ring and take a close look at the location and direction. I got lucky that the keys didn't fall out on the floor and get lost because the sleeve got stuck on the V-blocks. Remove all three keys and three springs. Slide the bearing off the shaft followed by the spacer. Check to see if they are directional. Under the spacer is a 5 8 snap ring that will have to be removed before the 1 2 synchronizer hub and first gear can be removed. Make a notation that the sleeve fits onto the hub in this direction with the shift fork slot down towards first gear. The shaft has been moved to the workbench and placed on a rag to help prevent the snap ring from bouncing off the bench and flying across the room. Make sure to wear a face shield or safety glasses. Use the custom tool and a hammer to remove the snap ring. Rest the V-blocks onto the flat surface of first gear and center the shaft under the ram. Operate the ram while holding onto the shaft. Take a close look at the synchronizer hub and first gear because they too are directional. Look at the center part of the hub and the splines. Often you will see a difference in the height of the center hub boss from side to side. The blocker ring and first gear can now be inspected. Remove the bearing and sometimes the big washer can be removed. If you remove this washer, be careful not to lose the locator ball bearing. 
the washer has a cutout for the ball bearing to fit into so the washer will not spin.